What is up, guys? Technicals here. At Someone needs attention. At you today with a fanless GPU rig build that I put together a few days ago. Now, if you followed the uh, farm flip video, you know that I took all the rigs and put them in closed cases with high-powered fans at the front and exhaust everything into a hot box. Things are working out great there. The, uh, the temperatures are consistently more down as I upgrade the fans further and put really high-powered fans in all of them. But I got to thinking, especially with my Zotac 1060 minis, the ones with one fan, I got to thinking, uh, are the fans really important? I couldn't help but think that the small single fan on the 1066 gigabytes from Zotac was getting overpowered by those amp miner fans or that ones from AC Infinity. And when I started looking at the temperatures of some of the 1060 rigs, uh, they were getting up into the mid 70s, which uh, uh, along with the other rigs, they shouldn't have gotten that high. So what I did was took one of the rigs with eight 1060s inside of it, took it out, gutted it, pulled all the shrouds, all the fans off of them to where it was just bare heat sink. The idea being that if I put three amp miner fans, which are 200 CFM a piece, at the front of the case, uh, it would pass enough air over the heat sinks to keep the temperatures at or below what I'm already getting with the stock configuration. As it turned out, it worked. You wouldn't be seeing this video if it didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I did to pull all the stuff off, what kind of temperatures I'm getting. It's been two days now since it's been running in the farm where it's much hotter. I'm going to show you the current temperatures after it's been running a couple days and uh, show you what I did and what I hope to do in experimenting with it further. I'm the Technicals. Let's get into it. Are you going to get me more views like Voscoin? No? All right, get lost. The Technicals. This project, along with all my other projects, I definitely learned a lot. If you remember, I was talking about during the farm flip process, my 1060 rigs, a few of them were overheating. They were just getting too hot for my liking. Now, it's not uncommon for RX 580s or the 1080 Ti's to really heat up, but the 1060 should be running a little cooler, and it almost always seems like it was the single card Zotac Mini 1066 gigabyte. I've heard plenty of people in the past say you should stay away from the single card, uh, single fan cards because they're just not delivering enough. But we all remember December and January and people were trying to get their hands on really anything that they could. So I was no exception. I have a whole bunch of these Zotac Mini 1060s. So I decided to go ahead and pop the shroud off. As you can see, it comes off pretty easy. And this card's a little different than most other cards. The fan is actually screwed directly into the heatsink, not the shroud itself. And once you take the shroud off, you've got to unscrew the fan from the heat sink. Kind of makes for an interesting look. You can also notice here that the card itself, the heat sink rather, is uh, in this sort of star configuration. That clearly indicates that it was designed to have a fan blowing air from the top down onto the heat sink and having that air dissipate out from all areas, all directions from the card. Now, with a reference style card has a straight heat, uh, fins on the heat sink, it's meant to have air blown through it in one direction. Uh, but this kind of heat sink is meant for air to blow down onto it. So that was going to be a challenge in this fanless rig build because fans blow in one direction uh, and they're at the front of the case. So not having a, a linear or reference style heat sink it was going to be a challenge. I knew it was. So what we did is we went ahead and popped them off. Threw one card in there just to test it out. We placed it perpendicular to the fans just to make sure we had plenty of airflow. And we put it in there, got a baseline reading, got about 49 Celsius here. And this is in an AC, an air controlled environment. So uh, that was, you know, pretty standard to what a card might run under load in, a, uh, in an AC environment with a lot of wind on it. So we, uh, we went ahead and popped the shrouds off a whole bunch of other cards, took all the fans off with just bare heat sink, loaded them in the case, fired it up and obviously it worked. Um, now you'll notice here what we did was we put a gentle angle on the cards inside the case. Now normally you mount them straight, but what we did is we mounted them 20, maybe 30 degrees, not too aggressive against the fan. That's the idea behind that being is that we want that air to contact the heat sink and uh, sort of create like pressure, just expose more surface area to that wind to carry more of that heat away. If we would have mounted the card straight on, uh, it wouldn't have gotten to the nooks and crannies as good on the heat sink. So mounting them this, with this uh, this angle here, it seemed to make a big difference. And you'll note on the edge there, we have one card that uh, still has the fan on it. I had some concerns about it being overheated. And so I just left the fan on. Uh, it actually it didn't make any difference whatsoever. Would I recommend doing this? I don't know. It depends on your application, really. This was kind of a good candidate because the temperatures were getting high and I was just, uh, I was running out of space inside the case. 
But I didn't stop there. I got this off of Amazon. This is a um, this is a, a very large heat sink. It has the uh, the fins that all go in the same direction. This should work out better for my fans in my cases because the air is all going in one direction. I can point the point it over the fins, and hopefully that'll carry away more heat. Now this uh, this uh, heat sink here link is in the description below if you want to check it out and buy it. Uh, it was about nine or ten dollars. Uh, it's all aluminum, big aluminum block. What I did is I took off the stock heat sink, cleaned off the die, cleaned off the RAM, which, by the way, the RAM on the, the 1060 does not have any thermal paste or tape or anything on it. It's just bare RAM chips on the PCB. So I got a, uh, a small baggie of uh, miniature heat sinks that are meant for Raspberry Pi boards and things like that. They come with these little copper plates. Uh, they're meant to cool off the, the internals. It seemed to work out pretty good. I went ahead and attached them to the RAM chips, and then I used thermal tape to uh, to apply to the die, the GPU itself. I tried to bring everything up to the same level because, as you can see here, uh, there's there's slight variations in the height of off the PCB of the RAM of the GPU. I tried to use thermal tape and those copper pads to uh, try to bring everything up to the same level. Uh, cleaned off everything as good as I could and went ahead and stuck the heat sink, the, uh, the new heat sink, to the top of it there. I had to end up securing it with a zip tie. I know it wouldn't be the technicals if there weren't uh, zip ties involved, uh, but I got it all attached, threw it in the case, and uh, the results were, again, comparable. I was still running in that mid-40s range here in the AC. Uh, so, you know, did it make sense to go through and do all that? Not at all. Uh, you know, you took it all off, and now it's going to be a real pain to get it all back on. You went through all this unnecessary labor. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is experimenting. The point is trying things. The point is pushing the envelope. You know, if I hadn't have done this, then I would have never known if it was a good idea. Sure, I can watch videos. Sure, I can read articles about what other people have done. Uh, but until you experience it and apply it and, you know, sort of reference reference it with what your unique and current situation is, I don't know that there's really any uh, there's really any better way to know how something is going to work out. So I wanted to experiment with it and I can watch water cooling loop and immersion uh, cooling videos all the live long day. But uh, that's not going to sort of d discourage me from doing it myself because I want to see how it works for me. And I want to learn it. I want to know how to do it, you know. And uh, even if something going into it I know absolutely is not going to work better than the alternative or traditional method, I still want to do it because I want to learn about it. I want to try it. So that's it, guys. Pretty underwhelming. I uh, had higher hopes for this. I thought I would achieve much, much lower temperatures. Now, the rig's still operating right now without issue. Here's a little, uh, this is currently right now, the Simple Mining dashboard showing 1060C, uh, 73 degrees Celsius. So it's uh, the hottest part of the day. It's about 5 p.m. here on the East Coast. Uh, by comparison, all the other rigs are running in the uh, the high 60s range or maybe mid 60s, depending on the rig itself. Uh, but for this rig, considering it has no fans and considering it has those uh, star configuration sort of heat sinks that are meant for a fan to blow down onto it instead of through it, I consider that to be pretty good. And on top of that, uh, it's less moving parts. That's uh, that's less, you know, if a fan failed inside the rig, then the temperature could go through the roof. This way, I know that, you know, the cards aren't going to uh, really fail on that. And now the case fan could fail and that could cause a bunch more cards to go down. Uh, that's the trade-off. So uh, again, wanted to experiment with this, wanted to see how it was going to do. Um, I plan to move forward with the liquid cooling experiments on the budget side of things. Um, that takes obviously a lot longer to do because uh, liquid cooling, I've never done liquid cooling before, so I've got to learn the whole process behind liquid cooling before I can start applying it to the mining rigs. And, uh, you know, you screw something up with liquid cooling, then potentially you're damaging a lot more uh, than just, uh, I mean, you could completely ruin the item. So I've got to be very careful. I've got to be very methodical with the liquid cooling. However, I do plan to post results on that very soon. So again, let me know what you think about uh, this uh, experiment with the fanless rig. Let me know what you think about this over narrated clip style video. Uh, still trying new things, still a small channel. If you like just kind of watching through this and listening to the soothing sounds of my voice, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, I'd appreciate you leaving me a comment below as to why you didn't like it so I can get better. Or you can just hit the down vote button if you prefer.
Don't forget to check the links in the description below for the products we mentioned here, links to the Discord, the Twitter, everything like that. Check out Subscriber Pool, YouTube content creator backed mining pool, now at this point boasting over 2,000 miners currently. So hopefully we can keep riding that pony and see where it goes. Check out Subscriber Pool, use my code TECH, T E C H, at the end of your mining string to let the pool operators know that I sent you. On the technicals, see you next time. Bye.